Welcome to Diversity TV, a show on current affairs. I'm your host, Sonal Fu. Today we have Premier of Alberta, Jason Kenney, who does not need any introduction. He is an MLA. He has been Premier of Alberta since 2019. And before becoming a Premier of Alberta, he was hosted. He, was, he had different positions in federal and provincial government, including the cabinet rules, immigration for the government of Canada. Welcome, Jason. Thank you, Sonny. Great to be here. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to come to our show. So, Jason, my first question to you is, um, is a hot topic currently in the, in not only in Canada, like a worldwide, about the Freedom Convoy. When we talk about the rights, it comes with the obligation too, and it has created a lot of uh, attention. Your thoughts on it? Well, people in Canada have the right to protest peacefully and lawfully, one of our democratic rights, and I respect that. I also understand the deep frustration of so many Canadians, including these uh, protesters, over COVID restrictions and how uh, COVID has uh, upended our lives for most of the past two years. I think uh, I'm sure that the vast majority of people involved in these protests um, are speaking passionately about their concerns. Obviously, there's been a small minority who have uh, hateful or extreme views, have used uh, hate symbols. I condemn those without reservation. But uh, and, and those who have um, engaged in unlawful protest, uh, my message is that has to end. Uh, blocking the border, for example, uh, between Alberta and Montana is dangerous. It's a highway hazard. It disrupts the local community. It disrupts the, the vast majority of truckers who are trying just to do their jobs and make a living. They're, they're being disrupted. And it's also affecting our farmers and um, uh, manufacturing companies trying to export products to the United States. So uh, the RCMP is responsible for enforcing the law. Uh, they have all of the tools that they need. They have to make the tactical decision about how to deal with the situation. But my message is let's celebrate uh, lawful and peaceful protest. Uh, but let's be Canadian about this and not um, and not damage the lives of others through illegal or uh, protests or through extreme views. No, thank you. And I agree with you. Uh, democracy give us a right to protest, but it has to be lawful too. And Jason, I just heard yesterday, like I was reading the news, when you mentioned about uh, by next week, you will be announcing a opening, like restrictions opening or relaxation. What's the update on it? Because everyone is frustrated. Oh, yes. Me most of all. Sonny, you can imagine what the last two years have been like. I haven't wanted to do any of these restrictions, but at times we had to, to prevent a catastrophe in the hospitals. Now, we are past the peak of infections on Omicron, and the hospital numbers are stabilizing and appear to be coming down. Um, we have to learn to live with COVID. It cannot govern our lives forever. The disease will be here for decades, generations, much like the Spanish flu. Its uh, descendant viruses still circulate. But after, between 1918, 1920, 20, uh, 50 million people had died of Spanish flu. However, with vaccines and, and natural immunity through prior infection, uh, the world achieved what you call population immunity and just learn to live with the disease. And we're going to have to start transitioning to that uh, carefully, carefully and prudently. Uh, er early next week, uh, our cabinet COVID committee will meet to discuss. And then later, uh, pl uh, ne earlier next week, we'll be releasing our plan uh, for dropping public health measures carefully and prudently. The first thing we'll do is to eliminate the uh, proof of vaccination program, the uh, restriction exemption program. I would also like to move quickly by lifting measures that affect children. I think they've been unfairly um, impacted by measures, by public health restrictions, even though they're at very low risk of severe outcomes from COVID, uh, but it's had a major impact on their mental health. Those are things to watch for early next week. We'll do this carefully, 
um, to make sure that we don't trip back into growth and hospital hospitalization. But stay tuned for some good news early next week. Thank you, Jason. And I'm looking forward, as you know, I have a son who is 11 years old and he is basically glued to the computer all the time and taking him out is a, becoming a struggle. He yeah. wants to go for swimming. As soon as the restriction, first thing we are going to book a swimming lessons for him. Good. Thank you. Uh, Jason, now we are going from pandemic to endemic, right? And then it will be needing a recovery plan, especially for the hospitalized um, uh, program for the restaurants, um, small businesses to help them. Is the government is planning anything to help? Well, we have provided nearly a billion dollars of cash support um, through what's called the Restart Grant. And uh, multiple rounds of that have gone out. We've also provided hundreds of millions of dollars to support to hotel uh, businesses through uh, by letting them keep half of the tourism levy. We, at the beginning of the pandemic, for several months, um, uh, absorbed a lot of the small business fees and, and taxes and like. And we've also rolled out the um, Jobs Now program, which provides a subsidy to businesses for new people that they are hiring. Uh, to try to help them recruit and restart coming out of COVID. And, uh, you know, if necessary, we'll, we'll do other things. But I think the main good news in Alberta, Sunny, is this economy is taking off. At the end of the day, nobody goes into business in, in the hope of getting a government subsidy check. People go into business because they're entrepreneurs. They're, ex they're excited about building something, creating something, taking risks. And uh, the, they need the best economic conditions to succeed. Alberta led Canada in economic growth last year. We appear to be leading Canada in economic growth again this year. We saw the creation of 130,000 net new Alberta jobs in 2021. Today, stats can report it on the month of January. We saw Alberta gain 7,000 jobs, even while the rest of Canada lost over 200,000 jobs. You're going to see incredibly good news in our forthcoming budget, major investments, people moving here, real estate taking off, the economy diversifying, energy prices strong. And so for all of those small businesses that have been impacted by COVID, I think the new activity, the new uh, cash in people's genes is going to help them recover from COVID. Thank you. And I'm looking forward. And thank you, Jason, for taking initiative. Now the pipeline, mountain pipeline expansion at Edmonton sector has completed. And also your initiative bringing the hydrogen plant or information to the West Dow which will create about thousands of jobs. Thanks a lot. Jason, I'm also looking forward for the Premier Summit on Fairness and Newcomer. Would you like to tell us more about that? That is a very important moment for Alberta. We ran in the last election with a pledge to uh, implement the Fairness for Newcomers Action Plan. This is about uh, eliminating all of the barriers to the success, economic success of newcomers, too many highly educated and experienced people immigrate here from abroad only to have Canadian businesses and uh, regulators fail to recognize their skills, experience, education, and credentials. Often that means immigrant professionals, skilled workers are stuck in survival jobs just to put food on the table uh, while their skills atrophy and they waste their potential. That's, a, that's not only immoral, I think, for us as a host society, it's also very inefficient because we lose the potential of, of so many of these people. So the Fairness for Newcomers uh, Summit uh, in February 17th here in Calgary will be an opportunity for uh, immigrants who have struggled to get to work at their skill level in Canada, to share their stories, share their frustrations, point to what doesn't work in the Canadian system with employers, with the professional regulators, with the government, so we can find solutions together. We'll be not only inviting immigrants uh, themselves, but all of the professional licensing bodies doctors, lawyers, engineers, dentists, veterinarians, 45 of them. So they can hear the immigrant stories. And we want to put them on the spot if they are restricting access to these regulated uh, 
occupations. Uh, we'll also be inviting immigrant settlement organizations who do very good practical work. We'll be um, highlighting success stories, spotlighting where the system is not working, and bringing employers together as well to ask them to do a better job in properly, quickly, and fairly assessing international experience, education, and credentials. The bottom line is it's about a concerted effort to make the most of everyone's talents, including the very newest Canadians in Alberta. Thank you, Jason, and I'm looking forward to attend that. And the one thing I say, I'm really impressed when you've not only said you can attend in person, but virtually also. So you can be anywhere in Alberta and you can attend. And the, other phase, and the other phase I really liked about this program is integration and mentorship program. So it's not just bringing the people, but mentoring them how they can integrate in the workforce. Thanks a lot. Jason, now we are also proceeding towards the Black History Month. Message for our viewers on a Black History yeah, Month. Yeah, well, February is Black History Month. And thank you for acknowledging this great chance to uh, reflect on a community that has made a huge contribution to the problems, but a community, the Black Afro-Canadian community, that has faced prejudice in the past and still sometimes experiences racism today. Uh, it's a great chance to point out that, you know, while the Black community has grown significantly in recent years, its roots in Alberta go way back to the 1900s. Uh, one of my favorite examples, John Ware escaped from slavery in South Carolina uh, at, during the Civil War in the 1860s. He became a cowboy in Texas and moved cattle north to Alberta. He was, became one of the most renowned, famous, and skilled cowboys in the uh, Canadian prairies. And when he died in, uh, in September of 1905, he had the largest funeral in the history of the province at a time when racial prejudice was much deeper. Those are the stories that we celebrate of people who have overcome prejudice. Um, and I just encourage everybody uh, to take a bit of time in February to learn a bit more about the history and contribution of Albertans of African descent. Thank you, Jason. You're watching Diversity TV show on current affairs. Jason, before we leave, I know you have a very strict timing and then you have to run to the next meeting. Would you like to give a message to the Albertans who are all over the world, what they should be looking forward and be proud of being Albertans? Well, thank you. Uh, what they can look forward to is Alberta's amazing economic turnaround. We've been through uh, between 2000 and 14 and 2021 was a tough time. COVID didn't make it any easier. But last year, we started the amazing Alberta comeback story. I've talked about leading the country in growth, but billions and billions of dollars of new investments, diversifying the economy in digital, high tech, innovation, telecommunications, manufacturing, film and television, forestry, petrochemicals, hydrogen, you name it plus a strong future for our uh, historical oil and gas sector. So, uh, and once we can fully get past COVID and travel and tourism return, uh, the sky is going to be the limit. I'm so excited. But Sonny, there's going to be one thing missing. Not enough people. We're already facing skill and labor shortages. And that's why when you talk about your international audience, Alberta, and you heard it here first, in our budget, we are going to be launching a, uh, a, a marketing program to attract people from around the world to come to Alberta. After travel restrictions lift, hundreds of thousands of selected immigrants who are still in their home countries will be traveling to Canada. We want more than our share to come to Alberta. So please send a message. If you're a Canadian living abroad or if you have relatives abroad, um, and they're, they're trying to figure out where are they going to move to in Canada as immigrants? How about this? Vancouver or Toronto, oh, over a million dollars for an average house. Calgary and Edmonton, about $430,000, $340,000 for an average house, respectively. Uh, Alberta, the only place without a sales tax. Alberta, the lowest cost of living, the lowest cost of food, the lowest cost of uh, fuel, of he home heating. The lowest cost of living generally, the lowest taxes, the only province without a sales tax, the lowest personal income taxes, the best quality of life, um, 
world-class schools and healthcare and natural environment uh, and a culture of enterprise, a welcoming and hospitable place. So, uh, Sonny, we, we, you know, you and, and your audience can help us to be our ambassadors to make Alberta the destination of choice of new Canadians. And I 100% agree, Jason, Alberta is the most beautiful province in Canada. And I'm proud to be living here. Thanks a lot. You are watching Diversity TV, current show on Toronto Affairs. I'm your host, Sonal Fool. Once again, thanks a lot, Jason. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sunil. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.